Hello, my name is Andreas Pitaleri. I'm a researcher in Raffaele Scientific Institute in Milan. Today I will introduce a Linux operative system, its installation and usage on, on computers. What is Linux? Linux is a Unix clone written from scratch by Linus Torvalds in 1991 in Finland. Unix is a multitasking, multi-user computer operating system developed at Bell Labs. Both operative systems, Unix and Unix, are POSIX compliant. Most three servers in the world are running on Unix Linux, and even our Android phone is based on Linux. Linux is free, it means every can kind of download and use on its computer. And finally, there are many different uh, distributions which can be used. The most used is Ubuntu, which is based on Debian. There are many ways to install Linux on our computer's laptop. I divide in two different, the simplest and the hard way. The simplest is thanks to the new Windows 10, which can be used using the Windows subsystem for Linux, WSL. So basically you can run Linux alongside the Windows 10 using as a normal computer, as a normal program, so without the need to install a, a second device or virtual machine, just installing it as the normal computers, as the normal programs, which is Windows sub system for Linux is, a, is an important tool developed by the Windows uh, Microsoft Windows uh, um, engineer. It allows to install a complete Ubuntu terminal environment in very few minutes in your Windows machine allowing you to develop cross-platform application without leaving Windows facilities. So basically, when you have it on your um, Windows 10, you can um, open the Windows PowerShell using the uh, opening as an administrator, and you can install on the PowerShell just typing this command here in bold, WSL minus minus install minus the Ubuntu. They will install all the important things to run Ubuntu on your Windows, and then you will find in your control center the installation of Ubuntu. So this is the simplest way. So the, the straightforward and the easy to install. There is also the hard way, which uh, uh, needs from the user to have a more, much more skills in order to install the Linux operating system. I divide in four different steps to install Linux in this way. First of all, you need to make a partition of your in hard disk because probably it is already installed the, um, a previous pre-installed operating system, usually with Windows. Then you need to, when the partition is done, you need to download and make an image of Ubuntu or other different Linux distribution on a USB bootable. Then you need to boot your USB, your computer using USB, and then follow easily the instruction which I um, summarize here in the bottom is as a screenshot. During the installation, you need to set up local time, language, network name, user, and the root password. Of course, the hard way needs really to have a really good skills in a computer. So normally is left to the most advanced users. Anyway, there is another operative system which is called OS 10, which already basically you have a terminal already installed in your um, computer. Mac OS X was originally presented as the 10 major version of Apple operating system for Macintosh computers. It was released in March 2001, and its score is a, POSIX, is a POSIX compliant as Unix, and is a build on the uh, FreeBSD kernel. So basically, you can, you, with the, your Mac OS X, you have your Linux environment already ready present in your computer. So now, after we introduce basically the way to install Linux on your on your computer, or either workstation or laptop, now let's go to deep what is Linux, uh, what all the things belongs to the 
uh, Linux operating system architecture. First of all, we need to introduce the Linux file system, which is a little bit different with respect to Windows and OS X. So basically, the uh, file system, which normally the abbreviation is FS, indicates a mechanism by which files are positioned and organized on storage devices. So basically mass memories, uh, such as the hard drives, CD-ROMs, and uh, USB. More formally, a file system is a set of abstract data types necessary for storing, writing, hierarchical organization, manipulation, navigation, access, and reading data. The homogeneous data is collected in containers, so basically what we call files. So a file is essentially a data container. It can contain text or binary data. Most important, we must know that uh, Linux is a case-sensitive system. Means uh, that this uh, Linux is sensitive to lowercase and up uppercase characters. For Linux, both files and directors are files anyway. Each file is placed within a specific directory folder. You see here. It. A, con a directory contained within another directory is called a subdirectory or subdirectory. A file system composed of directories is usually compared to a tree where the main directory or root is a slash, while the subdirectories represent the branches of the tree. Starting from the root directory, you can get to any file within any directory, just as starting from the trunk, you get to any leaf of any branch of the tree. The way Linux used to organize its files on the hard drive is different from that used from by Windows. Normally, new Linux users coming from Windows world sometimes find it difficult to manage files and directories. An essential point to keep in mind is that the while Windows you are identified drives such as C and D drives, in Linux we are dealing with something called mount points. This is our, the place where the other drives connect to the root partition. So as in Windows, in Linux uh, you need to have a login credentials. So any use, every user can, has its own name, username, its own password account. When you log in, you will be in your home, so you'll be your home slash username. And in that home, you are the owner. So basically you, do, you can do everything you like and you are basically safe. You will not be compromised any things based on the operating system. In fact, only root that we call in Windows can do things. So basically can install programs, that users, and so on. Actually, in Ubuntu, you can use the sudo program to, ac to access to the root permission, but this is very dangerous. And you need to be very careful when you use that. Normally, users are placed in groups which define a functional areas of and, and or responsibilities. Finally, the username has its own ID, which is important to make the user um, belongs to a particular group. First, we introduce the file system and the, and the different uh, characteristics of the files in Linux. The most important things in, uh, in the file system, so the Linux and the files in Linux is the ownership and the permission of each files in your home. Here I just put some very important characteristics, characteristics for the files and directories in Linux over the system. All files and directories have individual and group ownership, means that everyone can uh, honor different files in, in different groups. All files and directories have a read, write and execute permission <clears throat> assigned to as a set of of the individual owner, you, the group J, and owner and the holders, they are logging in the system. 
You can change permission if you are the individual owner or member of that group. Only root can change ownership. Basically, you see here the different group of permission of each file. Basically, you have rwx permission per user, per group, and per different other people. And depending on the presence of that flag, the file can be uh, can have a different ownership, different permission. The programs to change permission is ch mode, and the program to change ownership is ch own. Yeah, I just show some example where basically you can use ch mode to change permission of the of, of a file. You see, there are numbers going from seven to four, and then in order to change the owner of that file. So for, for instance, when you use 755, the owner has all full permission, which is seven. The group are only read and execute permission, which is five, and so the order are only read and execute permission, which is five. Instead, in the second sample, when you have a ch mode 500 in the file two, you have the owner are only read and execute permission, but the group and the order are no permission to see to read the file two. The last example, basically, you have 644 for the file three. The owner can read and write file. The group and the other can only read the file. As you can imagine, these are very powerful things. In a few lines, so you can change permission on your file and allow to the group of your ID to read, to write, and to execute that file. Instead to use numbers, you can use a different parameters, which are X, R, W, in order to add with the plus or remove with the permission to your files. In this slide, I present the most important directories in the Linux operating system. The first one, as I told you when you log in, is the your own. Basically, all users are home directories, and then there you can do whatever you want. You can write files, uh, and install your own programs, which you can be used only by you and not by the other people, unless you change permission on that directors. So also groups and the other can do other things. Then we have slash bin and slash user bin. Basically here you find all the important system commands usable for the terminal command. Then we have slash bin, slash users bin. Here they contain all commands by used by the root to perform maintenance or install programs. Then we have slash etc. Here we have all sort of configuration files. Then we have slash var which contains all the different logs from different programs different uh, things then we have a slash dev which is the device files and the slash proc which contains special files which are the basically all the processing programs running in on, on the computers as soon as you start to learn about Linux and the Unix-like operating system, you will come across this term of standard input, standard output, and the standard error. These are three standard streams that are established when a Linux command is executed. In computing, a stream is something that can transfer data. In the case of these streams, the data is a test. Data streams like water streams, have two ends. They have a source and, a, and an, an outflow. Whichever Linux command you are using provides one end of each stream. 
The other end is de determined by the shell that launched the command. That L be connected to the terminal window, connected to a pipe, or redirected to a file or other command according to the command line that launched the command. In Linux, standard in is a standard input string. This accept test as an input. Text output from the command to the shell is delivered via the standard output stream. Error message from the command are sent to the standard error stream. The values between parentheses are unique number to identify the stream and they are always used for standard input, standard output and standard error. And they are 0, 1 and 2 respectively. So as soon as you start to learn about Linux, you will see that you will come across to the terminal shell. Uh, now, normally, this is the, let's say, the most scaring things about the new user because it's basically absent in Windows operating system. So let's introduce the terminal, how, uh, how is powerful is in doing things. So, the Linux terminal normally is called bash shell. Uh, this is with the next slides will be the introduction to the bash shell. The shell is a command interpreter. It's a layer between the operating system and the user. So basically, the shell is the bit here in the picture, allowed to interact with the kernel in order to make things in our computer. So basically, a shell is a computer program that interprets the commands you type and send them to the operating system. Secondly, it provides a programming environment consisting of environment and variables. Most, CFS, most systems support at least two shells, TC shell and a bash. The default shell for your account is normally TC shell, but the most popular and also powerful Linux shell is bash. You can type a different command in your terminal and you will have a different output that we call, or that we present previously, the standard output. In fact, if you do, for instance, echo dollar shell, you will have all, in your terminal, you will have all the different environment in your home. This is going to be done in different way. On the slide, on the bottom right, you see an example of a terminal and uh, the terminal and what, all the written you see in, on, in that picture is basically what we call the standard output. There are many commands, as I told you, possible in the Linux terminal. And these are all present in uh, slash bin and slash bin. To execute a command normally in the terminal, and you will see that in the demo um, presentation, you just need to type on the terminal the command with the, its uh, own argument. Here, for instance, uh, I present to you one of the most widely used command name, which is ls, stands for list. It is allowed to basically list all the files in directory present in your directory. After the, the name, the command name, you need, you can put an option, a flags, in this case, minus L, it allows to basically list in a longer format the, all the files present in the directory. And then the argument is where you want, where you want to see all the, the files. For instance, in this example, the file present in a slash etc in a longer format. As I told you before, in Linux, when you install Linux, basically you have a plethora of programs already present in your computers. You just typing one of them, one of these, you can basically make different things. There are uh, a nice free book called the Linux command, and then you can download from the web page linuxcommand.org. But also, you can get information and all the different parameters and flags present per, for each program using another program called man. So basically, if you want to know uh, information about, um, 
for instance ls you just type man ls it will open um doc where you you can read all the information parameters can be used for that program here i just listed the most important programs present in linux uh, they are divided by the different features different characteristics and they can be exploited by the user to achieve different analysis a different output. In this slide, I present issue for comments. Normally I use, and the people by informatician, computational chemist use to achieve different things. Uh, there are, um, starting from the first to the last, basically 99% um, of the time you, you will going to use those programs. The first one is PWD, which is print working directory. Basically, it tells you where you are. CD means change directory. Basically, allow it to move from one directory to another one without using mouse. LS lists the files in the directory. CP, allow, it allows you to copy files. And VU, which is allow to move or rename files from one directory to another. RM, delete files. Then we, can, we have a, a program called mkdir, which is make directory. Then we have U, uh, UEMI, allow to know which is the user logged, logged in the program, in the computers, and they also print uh, the name of username if you forget it. Nicely, PS uh, lists all the different process files and process running in your computer. Then we have uh, ICO, which is uh, basically allowed to print on the terminal what you write. Then we have alias, which is used to tailor commands. For instance, if you want to do a very long string to perform, to run a command, just making an alias allowed to um, reduce the time to type. For instance, LM stands for LS minus L pipe more, which allow to you scroll the different list um, very slowly. Then we have tar and gzip, which are basically allowed to make archive and zip archive of your directories. Diff allow to find differences between files and directories. Find allow to find files in a, in a directory. Nicely, grep is a very powerful program, which allow to search in uh, files for one or more patterns arguments. Finally, you can create a symbolic link using LN. In this slide, I present a very easy example how to um, use the previous command I present you in, uh, in a terminal. So basically, here you see you can create a directory called test, uh, you can print hello everyone to a file called my file text and so goodbye all to the same file. You see the different arrows means uh, the first arrow is a single arrow. You basically you create a file called my file.txt writing there hello everyone. Then in the second you see two different arrows it means you are going to append so adding another line called goodbye all. So that's nice, you will see better in the demo version. Then, <clears throat> less, it allows you to see the content of the file, my file text. I show you then different way to create directories, how to move files from one directory to another one. So you, really to, you can enjoy your own computer once you install Linux by and then you can remove files using the rm command. Here, another example of how to use commands in Linux terminal. With the cd tile dex slash desktop, basically you change to a directory called desktop. Keep in mind the tiled symbol means uh, home. 
Then when you go, you when you are there, you can create a directory with with mk directory call m my underscore folder. You change your directory to my underscore folder. Cd dot dot. You go back to the previous directory and then go and then doing again cd my my underscore folder. You go back to the my folder directory. You can create within the same in, in, with this for with this my underscore folder, you can create another folder called another underscore folder. You can change your directory to another directory called another folder. Then you go back twice just doing cd dot slash dot dot. You can create an edit file using touch and using a, a one of the most used and no editor called VIM. So basically you create a file doing touch the name of the file. In this case is my file dot, dot text. You can open using open my file dot text or as I told you, you can use VIM, which is the most widely used editor in a Unix terminal to basically to edit the file. Instead to open the file to write, you can you can only you are basically interested to only see what is inside. You can use a cat. So basically, if you do cat my file dot text, you will see the content all the content of your file. But for instance, if you are interested to see only the first ten lines or five lines, you can use head. So you see how the name of the comments are very. Um, easy to remember, you can use head and you will see the 10 lines or you can use head minus n5, you will see the first five lines of the file. If you want to see the end of your file, so you see the last lines of your file, you can use tail, which is does this uh, as head by the other way around. Here, basically, you can use another command called less, which is similar to cut. So basically it allows you to see the content of your files, but it goes slowly. So basically since cut goes basically fast with the less, you allow to really read the content without to be too in, in rush. The command ls, as I told you, basically is the, let's say, the most widely used command in every day you do when you use a Linux terminal. There are different uh, parameters you can use uh, with the ls. Here I just present to you some of the most important. ls mino a list of the file, including hidden file beginning with a period dot. ls minus ld star list details about the directory and the not its contents. Using the option minus F, put an indicator character at the end of each name. Classical minus L is a simple long li listing of your directory. In combination, L, H give a human readable file size. In combination with S, sort files by the file size and with T, sort files by modification time. All these options will be more easy to understand in the demo, in the demo video. So let's now go back to the file system and how we can navigate on the Linux file system. There are two types of path names, absolute the full path to a directory of file begins with the root symbol of slash. Relative path. This is a partial path that is relative to the current working directory. Here are some examples. So basically, the absolute path is cd slash user slash local slash lib. If you have a relative, you, go, you can have only slash lib. You can have a absolute 
path using for instance cd echo dollar home and then you can use pwd which i remind you is print working directory to know where you are and then you can go back doing cd dot dot using cd dot dot you are doing relative path of your in your command so basically remember when you have a slash the name of the directory you are in the absolute path when you have no slash, but just the name of the, the, the of the the path, this is a relative path. One in the previous slides, I introduced the concept of streaming, so the standard input, the standard output, and the standard error. I told them the output of one command can be the input of other commands. And this can be useful done in Linux using the command call pipes, which is the symbol on your keyboard uh, present in your keyboard in the left top. So basically here mm, we are concatenating in this example three different programs, PS, grep, and WC. With the first command, PS, we are mm, basically sending the output to the grep. So basically, what we want to do here in this um, concatenation of commands is to see the running Netscape browser and how many Netscape bro um, run, pro running programs are present in, your, in our Linux uh, operating system. So PS, AUX, print all the process running. We filter using pipe, using grep. So basically we filter out only the process with the name Netscape. Then we count. So WC stands for word count. We count the line. And so we know in the total how many running an escape browsing e are present in our computer. In the last slides, uh, we will end uh, with the, the concept of a process in Linux uh, and with uh, some example of coding. In Linux, uh, we have two different process when we run a program. We have foreground process and a background process. Foreground process, when a command is executed from a prompt terminal and runs to a completion at which time the prompt returns is set to run to return in the foreground. Instead, background process, when a command is executed from the prompt, so from the terminal, with the token present in the slide at the end of the command line, the prompt immediately returns while the command still continues, as I said, to return in the background. And this is a, a very peculiar, a very important things uh, you should know in order to run when you run a command in uh, on the terminal. Finally, as I told you, the bash is very powerful. You can run programs, but you can even do your own programs in order to perform analysis uh, or many different things. Here, for example, we have uh, the nice if program sorry if uh, testament which is can be used inside of a program in order to check if a condition is present so is it present if it's true or is a false you can run a command one otherwise you can run another command and so on this is very important if you want to build your own pipeline in order to make analysis and uh, finally, we have uh, loops in can be done in, in, in a terminal bash. And normally, for in bash, you can use two different way to make lo loops. One is for, and then one is while. So with the for, you can perform different commands in um, in a loop. And the same things uh, you can do using while. 
All this information, all these uh, slides uh, are present in a PowerPoint presentation, so you can, you can download uh, for your own usage. And all these commands that present in Linux can be seen in uh, execution on my demo presentation.